Hello, I'm Lisa Brown, Senator from Spokane and the Senate Majority Leader. Thank you for participating in our online town hall. We've had over 5,800 votes on the questions submitted from all over the state. I'm going to answer the top 10 questions, and we're going to start with Desi from Western Washington. This question is very relevant to what the legislature is doing right now. Many people are concerned that drug offenders are put in incarceration rather than treatment programs. And the Washington legislature is really trying to respond to this concern in a way that protects public safety, but also provides the best possibility for people to get the treatment they need to become drug and alcohol free. So we have set up a special sentencing alternative called the Drug Offender Sentencing Alternative, which allows for reduced sentences when individuals are able to complete their drug or alcohol treatment. Uh, we've also allowed counties to set up drug courts, and drug courts work specifically with offenders to lessen the amount of time that they would have to serve in jail or prison tied into being successful in a treatment program. Uh, we also have early release for drug offenders who are working towards uh, becoming um, clean and sober and who um, uh, complete programs even in jail. Uh, of course, jail is not the base, best place for treatment to occur, but many times um, you can become successfully drug and alcohol free and there's no reason for us to spend more money on incarceration of prisoners than is necessary. Uh, one exception to this is meth offenders because of the seriousness of that crime and uh, the difficulty in treatment. Oftentimes, meth offenders are still uh, incarcerated. Peter W. from Kirkland asks about the income tax. I have long been a proponent of a more fair tax system. Unfortunately, Washington State's reliance on the sales tax has put us in the bottom in terms of the fairness of our tax structure. It would be um, difficult to uh, bring about an income tax in Washington State without a vote of the people, and it is likely that it would be challenged in our courts because of an earlier court decision. However, an income tax could be imposed on high-income individuals, say those working, uh, earning over $250,000 a year. And this would allow for more fairness in our tax system. And let's face it, high-income individuals already pay a lot of taxes, but they pay them to the federal government. This, this would give us the opportunity to have some of that support for our schools and universities and health and human service programs right here in Washington State. This question is about marriage equality. I came into the legislature in 1993 and we attempted to pass a civil rights legislation guaranteeing equality for citizens regardless of their sexual orientation. The measure passed the House, failed the Senate, and it took decades, actually till 2006, before that historic civil rights legislation actually passed. I was very pleased to be the leader of the Senate Democrats at that point in time and to help us bring that measure to the floor and see it successfully implemented. Since that time, Washington has taken incremental steps towards marriage equality. Uh, we believe that this incremental approach helps us in our dialogue with the public, helping the public to understand the rights and responsibilities associated with marriage and the wisdom and equality in extending those rights and responsibilities uh, to gay and lesbian couples. Uh, just this year in the legislature, we took a major step forward guaranteeing almost all of the rights and responsibilities uh, associated with marriage in Washington State uh, uh, to all. This is not full marriage equality and we still have challenges with respect to federal laws but it's an important step forward for uh, domestic partners to be able to register and benefit from many of the same uh, privileges and responsibilities that other couples have.
Kim from Marysville makes an important point. In our state constitution, education is the paramount duty of the legislature. She wants to know what about, uh, what revenue sources are being considered to really make this commitment real? It's a very good question. In this time of economic downturn, cuts are being experienced throughout state government and unfortunately our K-12 public schools are also experiencing cuts. Fortunately, there's federal stimulus dollars coming into the state, but that won't be enough to make up for the very uh, declining in, uh, revenue that we have in Washington over the next two years. So unfortunately, we will likely see some uh, of our progress in reducing class sizes and improving opportunities for teacher education uh, move backwards over the next two years. Legislators are considering different options to bring before the public as an opportunity to raise more revenue for public education. We just passed an historic bill that expands the definition of basic education in Washington State, a definition that hadn't been addressed in decades. By taking this step forward of redefining basic education to include things that we know are very important, like all-day kindergarten and uh, education, early education for at-risk uh, children, this will hopefully provide the momentum for the legislature to actually bring forward revenue proposals and ask for the public's support. Shannon from Tacoma wants to know how, in a time of declining uh, economy and tough budgets, we can still maintain our commitment to a green economy and to the kind of jobs associated with a green economy and addressing the challenge of climate change. Fortunately, this is an area where we can show real progress in this legislative session. The Senate Democrats formed an agenda around green jobs and addressing climate change. And I'm happy to report that most of our bills are moving successfully through the process. The number one initiative is the Green Jobs Bill. It will quadruple the number of homes and farms and businesses that can get energy efficiency and conservation in order to lower utility bills and lower our dependence on foreign sources of energy. This is also an area where the federal government is now our partner. We are going to receive over $60 million of federal stimulus money that we can put into these energy conservation and efficiency efforts. This piece of legislation brings the public sector and the private sector together to plan for a clean energy future and to help make Washington State a place where the clean energy industry can grow and people can get the kind of jobs that will be part of the new economy as well as uh, provide the opportunity for Washington to be more successful in attracting federal research dollars to our research labs and our research institutions in order to make the clean energy revolution go even farther.